Hey guys, so today we're going to be reviewing a band I stumbled across um, a while ago um, actually but um, I didn't really give them much of a listen because um, I keep uh, looking up uh, new um, artists and uh, because of that I keep listening to the ones I keep finding therefore I didn't really get a chance to listen to this uh, band but um, yeah obviously recently I've um, started giving them um, a fair bit of a listen now, um, which is uh, why I'm now capable uh, to give it a review. So um, this band um, has got uh, two albums under them, um, the first one um, called Excluded and the second one Nemesis. We're going to be reviewing uh, the latter, um, Nemesis, and um, just a brief about this band. Um, I'm not sure who formed uh, the band, um, I guess it was uh, maybe the singer, um, but um, they're from Denmark, uh, that's where they're from. Um, the lead um, singer is um, a producer, um, he has his own studio and everything, and um, he's an engineer, um, things like that. Um, he plays the uh, guitar in this band, so um, he does that also with his singing. Um, he can do leads, but um, there is another guitarist who is uh, the main lead uh, guitar. Um, the singer, which is Niklas Sohn, um, he um, does leads on um, free tracks. Unless you have the uh, bonus track, tracks, and then uh, he just has one more. So, um, yeah, in all the tracks, um, he only does um, four solos. Um, um, you can find this um, singer on YouTube, he has a YouTube channel where um, he's uh, done covers of ACDC and um, Let It Go, uh, the song from Frozen, um, he, he does it very well. Um, there's some guitar things on there where he uh, shows uh, some playthroughs of uh, some songs he has uh, done and uh, soloing and uh, stuff like that. But um, yeah, and um, if you like the sound of him, he's in other bands as well. He's in a band called Mal Run, and he's also in another band called Theory, um, with the album The Art of Everything. I have to say that because you just write Theory, and Theory of a Dead Man comes up, and all sorts of other things. It's impossible to find unless you uh, do the band as well as the uh, album. So, um, getting into it, this is the album. I've gone ahead and actually uh, bought this, um, because it's really good, and um, I'll buy and support things which I think are good. This is the back, and um, I'll quickly uh, show you the insides because um, they're not really a well-known band, so um, there's no real album showing. Um, the disc, pretty simple. Um, under the disc, pretty simple. The book um, is pretty um, thick, so again, that's uh, the album cover there. And then you got this on the back, which is the band. So, uh, lead singer, that's the lead guitarist, that's the drummer, that's the bass player. And then you got your lyrics with uh, some skies, that's uh, typically um, the way it looks until you get to the middle, you get some pictures. Um, they supported Metallica, I think, so that might have been a picture of uh, when they toured with Metallica. And then you got um, there and there. And other than that, um, it's just the end where they say thanks. So, um, yeah, um, musically, um, they have an orchestral sound uh, throughout. Now, obviously, yeah, they don't have an orchestra that actually plays with them. I think it's uh, basically just kind of sounds they uh, kind of um, engineered up out of uh, just, you know, sounds in order to actually um, accomplish that uh, sound, but uh, that's um, kind of consistent uh, throughout. Um, they're influenced by bands like Symphony X and um, Dream Theater and um, Megadeth. Um, bands like uh, that are pretty old school, some kind of modern, but definitely um, they're classed as a progressive uh, metal band and um, kind of old school modern um, sound. Um, and as I said, they've uh, toured with uh, Metallica. I don't know if they've actually uh, toured with Dream Theater. I definitely know they toured with Metallica. But um, there's 14 tracks um, on this album. And, um, well, 14 if you uh, get the bonus tracks. If you don't have the bonus tracks, you only get 12. Um, 
I don't know where you have to be because I live in the UK and um, I got the bonus track. I don't know if that's around the world because I'm thinking, because it doesn't say UK bonus or anything, it just says bonus track. So I'm thinking, because I got this from Amazon, um, I got the album, but I also got an Amazon um, MP3 of the album, but it excluded the two bonus. So I think uh, you get the bonus if you buy the album. If you don't and go MP3, you lose the two bonus tracks. So um, the whole album with the bonus tracks um, is an hour, four, six minutes, so just over an hour, which is a pretty solid um, length of an album. So the first track is an opener, which is um, the final night of silence. Uh, the opener is one minute fifty two, um, so pretty much two minutes. Um, the band aren't playing anything in here. It's uh, just um, like uh, the orchestral uh, ground sound. There uh, some horns, um, and then eventually it gets into a quite um, nightwish um, sound with that. Um, I don't know what the instrument uh, Nightwish uh, used. It's that high bright um thing that um um is consistent uh, with Nightwish. That kind of comes in. It's a uh, quite eerie kind of a uh, creepy uh, sound. At least that's uh what my girlfriend uh thought when she heard it. She said, "Why am I listening to creepy music?" But um that's what she got out of it. And um and then we uh, get into the first track, which is the title um song of the album, Nemesis. This is three minutes uh, twenty seven seconds. It's um it's um pretty heavy. Um they start off um just uh, doing the um simple um heavy stuff. Um they play uh, seven string guitars so um they're not the typical six so you get a pretty um meaty uh, sound out of them. But um they do have real nice tone to them as well. So um the vocals are really strong. Uh, this guy is an incredible vocalist. Um, he's um, very strong and powerful in the, the riff of this song. The chorus is more um, musical. It's not one of the most musical um, songs there is um, in chorus wise. But um, it's a pretty catchy uh, chorus, pretty memorable, um, easy to listen to and the riff is um, you know, the heaviness and um, brutality of what you expect from metal. With some um pretty um de well not decent um pretty great uh, vocals. Um the solo in this uh, you get two of them. Um the first one is uh, by um Nicholas and um yeah he does the first solo. Um he plays it um faster than the actual lead guitarist, which uh, some people think well if he's a faster player then why um isn't he the main? Now, I actually prefer the second solo, and I'll get to that later, but um, the first solo is by uh, the lead singer Nicholas, and um, it's pretty um, quick and everything. Um, it's not just shred for the sake of shred. Um, there is their feel to it. It does have um, a nice rhythm to it. But it is mostly just um, showing gas uh, speed. And then the second solo um, is by the actual lead guitarist, uh, Frederick. Um, and that's uh, more on the kind of uh, musical side to it. Um, he puts an effect in for um, a few seconds, which kind of sounds like a keyboard. Um, there is an effect uh, that can make the guitar do that. So um, that's just another reason why I like it more, because it's uh, more musical. It has fast elements uh, to it at times, where it's uh, just on the same speed as Nicholas. Um, but it is overall um, musical and... Um, nice sounding and then it has that uh, few second um, keyboard uh, tone to it um, and um, it's quite unique and um, this is the most pleasing to the ears out of the two solos and um, after the solo there's um, a whammy pull and um, the lead singer goes to um, kind of an aggressive in your face um, kind of uh, tone like you would say to someone who's angering you like you're up in their face and you're really angry and that's the what, uh, way he's portraying the vocals until it gets back into the chorus um, the next track Endlessly Falling is uh, dead on five minutes um, this is um, again the lyrics of Nicholas and the music is by Nicholas um, every track um, on this album is basically the lyrics of Nicholas and the music is uh, Nicholas apart from one song, which I will tell you when I get to it, but then um, I'll just 
and have you know that um, everything is pretty much uh, done by Nicholas. Um, so endlessly falling um, is um, got um, quite um, an aggressive uh, beat to it and uh, flow. Um, the chorus um, is um, quite um, fast with uh, the orchestral sound. So the orchestral sound is um, the start of the chorus. And then he uh, says it quite uh, quickly, and then the um, orchestral stuff is uh, very bright and um, quick. Dun dun dun! Dun dun dun! Just then uh, comes in quick, and then um, eventually it kind of uh, opens up, and the singer just um, holds uh, the note, so it uh, opens that up, and then it comes back to the um, heavy hitting of the orchestrals, the music, and the vocals uh, quickly uh, just dun dun dun! Dun 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 dun! dun. And then it does the opening uh, sound. Which is um, a good way to play it. You don't want it to all be just um, sharp, 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 because then it's uh, too much, and you don't want it to just always be uh, too open, unless it will just take too long. So um, it's got the nice, bright, um, sharp, um, quick tone, and then the nice, long, open um, tone as well. Um, the solo um, is just uh, Frederick here. Um, it's a very nice uh, sounding solo, it's um, one of the best on the albums in uh, my opinion, uh, mostly because it is um, extremely musical, it's more musical than his other one, uh, this is very uh, musical, um, not melodic um, at all, it's just um, a very musical and nice and um, very pleasing sounding uh, solo. There is maybe um, three um, parts in the solo where he uh, speeds it up. Um, but um, the thing about this uh, guitarist is um, he's very musical. He's put, he got he has a lot of heart in the uh, solos, and when he uh, does uh, do speed, it is very quick. Uh, but um, it's not just um, okay. Here's something quick. It's what sounds good. Does every single note have its reason to be there? Does it sound good? It's not just I'm just going to show speed for the sake of showing speed. Everything is there for a purpose and a reason, and it's there to sound nice. Um, so he puts heart into everything he does, and when he's not shredding, it's obviously just a lot of heart, a lot of holes and everything, and the guitar absolutely sings. And um, the solo in Endlessly Falling um, is one of the best um, sounding solos. Um, not just for uh, him and this band, it's uh, a great solo for... Um, anyone uh, really he's very talented it's a very very nice sounding solo now where uh, savage um is uh, three minutes 25 um this is a single as well as nemesis and that was a single so they're the only two singles um savage um is um, a very old school sound um so it's uh, not as modern as uh, nemesis and endlessly falling it's um more um modern not modern i just said it wasn't modern it's uh, old school, um, and um, it's got a bit of a groove to it, um, it's quite a groovy uh, sounding track. Um, I like the more kind of modern uh, stuff, so Savage isn't as good as the previous two tracks. It's still good, like the vocals are still superb, uh, the solo's um, fine and everything. It's just I prefer a modern sound, and this is old school. But again, um, not to um, just bash this track, it's different because uh, Nemesis uh, was all there, you got two solos, Endlessly Fallen, you have a beautiful solo, and then uh, that great um, attack of the orchestral at the start of the chorus, then the nice um, breathing part, and then the quick attack again, and then now you have old school um, sound. So there's diversity, and um, I welcome that, because... Um, I wouldn't want Nemesis and Endlessly Fallen um, every single time. I want to hear Nemesis and I don't want to hear it again. And I want to hear Endlessly Fallen and I don't want to hear it again. I want to hear um, it keep changing. I don't want to listen to the same thing over and over again. So um, I'm, what I'm getting at is I don't... I prefer modern, but I do welcome the change. And... Um, it's good that they do. It's a plus, basically. Um, the riff, um, it's a typical old school thing where um, the singer sings, uh, the band disappears, and then when um, he fades out, uh, the band comes in to do the dun 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 dun. 
and then um, they cut out and then the thing comes in and then about halfway through the riff um, they all come in together. It's very typical of um, what bands uh, do, especially old school. It's a very typical uh, playing uh, style, but uh, that's the way it goes. Um, the chorus um, isn't as good as MC Fallen, um, probably on the same level as Nemesis, um, it's down to personal opinion I would imagine. Actually, Falling, I definitely think, is a better chorus, but again, uh, it's an opinion. Um, the solo is, um, again, it's old school um, style of playing. Um, it's a short solo as well, it's uh, nothing uh, too long. It's definitely not as long as the first uh, track, Nemesis, because you've got two uh, blooming guitarists, and it's not as long as Endlessly Falling. So, with the solo here, it's uh, just an old school style of playing, and it's uh, pretty short. It's still uh, got its length, but it's just a bit short, and um, it's just an old school style. Which um, there's, there's been so many bands um, in the early years of metal that um, it's um, just a bit bland, really, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, the nameless um, appar appar apparition, yeah, the nameless apparition is a uh, five minute um, twenty four, so uh, this is the longest uh, one so far. Um, and again, um, the music is by Nicholas Sohn and the lyrics are Nicholas Sohn. Um, you get two solos um, in uh, this one. Um, the first one being Nicholas again. Um, whenever there's two solos, Nicholas always starts off. Um, it's um, again a pretty quick um, solo. Uh, the second solo is uh, the weird one um, because it's... Um, it doesn't sound like a guitar, it sounds like keyboard, like the whole part. Like obviously in Nemesis, um, Frederick had that uh, small few second um, keyboard sound that he put in. But um, the second solo, it's all keyboard. Um, he just goes with that tone throughout, so it sounds like there's a guitar solo and a keyboard solo, but in fact it's two guitars. Well, at least I think it is, because a guitar can do it. He may have done the keyboards, but there's nothing saying he plays it. Um, in the credits everywhere it doesn't say it's a keyboard it just says he's a guitarist everywhere so I'm gonna go with it's a guitar and um, it definitely brings something new to the table like because uh, uh, you, you, you'll never hear it anywhere else this is uh, the com this is the only solo where it's complete a uh, keyboard which is a guitar but it's the only one that sounds like a keyboard you know what I mean <coughs> The nameless apparition um, in the riffs, um, uh, the vocal delivery, it's um, a lot more kind of pushed, um, so um, a lot more kind of um, delivered instead of just uh, singing. It um, sounds like he's um, breathing in, holding it in his uh, gut and then um, really pushing um, the words out. Um, the chorus, um, very, very good, um, orchestral again, um, very, um, memorable, very, very catchy, um, when I, uh, gave this the first listen without really giving it much, um, of attention, it was, um, a, a favourite, um, that's not the case now, but, um, it's, it's a very good chorus, um, to sacrifice, um, the lyrics here are, um, Nicholas and Frederick. So uh, the two um, guitarists, and the music is again by uh, Nicholas. Um, so uh, the sacrifice is three minutes forty four, and um, it's a melodic. This is uh, the worst track on the album, um, in my opinion. Um, but um, the reason for this is um, th there's obviously the singer, and it's it's obviously a new sign to him because he's singing to a melodic track instead of heavy which again is welcome and nice to hear, but the problem is um, th there's no band there, it's all piano and um, the orchestral sound I believe, and that is it the whole time, the band never shows itself and there is no solo, so it sounds nice and you get to the chorus and it's really nice, it's beautiful and it goes back to the riff it goes back to the chorus and it doesn't change so you get about a quarter way through then it gets back to the same old riff and it's like okay this is getting a bit uh, repetitive now 
and then gets to the chorus and it's just like I'm getting a bit bored now and uh, it's a massive disappointment because it's the only uh, proper melodic there, there's another song near the end where uh, it starts melodic I just like this but uh, this is the only pure melodic and it's a shame because they didn't really do it well if there was a solo or a bit of a change up you know um, after the second chorus just give uh, something new but um, from what I remember they don't and um, if they were to have a solo it could have given a nice musical um, nice um, soothing um, relaxing um, journey through uh, the solo and it would have been nice it would have showed something new um, would have uh, piqued my interest back up again but um, no and I don't know why they would miss it out maybe because it's mod melodic they want to focus on the vocal delivery I know a lot of bands keep saying that oh, the vocals are too good and we don't want anything to uh, make it disappear but the thing is if you put a solo in um, the lyrics are all still there and um, everything will still be the same it's just um, you take a bit of the song for a solo it doesn't affect anything else you just put a solo in. So I don't know why. It seems a little silly to me, in fairness. But um, again, it is nice sounding, and if um, you can uh, get past it, um, it's a good um, song. Um, Odd to the Damned. So uh, this is um, Frederick's um, song. So music is Frederick, and the lyrics are Frederick. Um, Onto the Damned is 7 minutes 16, so this is definitely the longest um, one so far. Um, Onto the Damned is going to be the heaviest track um, so far. Um, screaming um, comes in um, briefly um, throughout the riff and uh, briefly throughout the chorus as well. And um, um, after the chorus, I think he has um, a fair bit of screams. But um, the solo um, is um, amazing. Uh, the chorus um, is um, massively orchestral, um, a very big, um, grand sound to it. It's great. Um, the riff. Um, and everything is um, brilliant, it's vocally well delivered. It being subtle screams adds again um, a new layer to them and more diversity, uh, something new. Um, the song's um, start um, is uh, very good because it starts um, kind of um, acoustic. So um, it starts acoustic and then you have um, the guitar kind of subtly um, come in and it's quite quiet. And then the acoustic part leaves, and then it goes to the uh, other guitarist um, doing the lead. Then they both come in to um, real heavy um, chugging, um, really aggressive, heavy, brutal, thick chugs that sound uh, quite distorted because it keeps sounding like uh, the sound keeps getting cut off for a brief second, then it comes back again. It's quite um, ag aggressive and dirty sound. And then it gets into uh, the riff part. And um, Gravity um, is 3 minutes 59. Um, this is a very groovy track, probably the most groovy um, song um, on the album. Um, and um, it follows the same thing, uh, the chorus is um, big and open, it's a kind of a groovy, catchy musical. Um, the solo, as per usual, is really, really, really good. Um, the next track, Ablaze, um, which is 5 minutes uh, 56. Um, oh wait, Ablaze is actually um, all done by Frederick as well. I didn't see that uh, when I looked. So uh, yeah, Ablaze, the music is uh, done by Frederick and the lyrics are done by Frederick. Um, Ablaze is uh, one of the best uh, tracks. Um, to me, um, because the chorus is one of the best. Um, I think it sounds amazing, this chorus. Um, 
Uh, the chorus only kind of happens once, and when the chorus is supposed to come back for the second time, it's a screamy part. So um, I absolutely hate the fact that um, there's only two wet versions of the chorus, because where the second one's supposed to be, it actually isn't. So, um, and they replace it with screen lines, which really sucks because it is like the best um, chorus. But um, yeah, they replace it with screaming, which is uh, dreadful. But um, the riffs are great. Um, the chorus, um, the first time through, is amazing, and then um, near at the end when it comes back again, it's um, really, really good. The solo is um the best in my opinion um in this song because a blaze kind of sounds like this is going to be the end of the album because um it all fades out and then um the guitar kind of keeps coming in with uh, what sounds like feedback from the amp so just a <laughs> kind of sound just um like um he turns the volume off and then turns it back up and then the amp gives him feedback that everything is uh, just fading out while um, the guitar is just doing that kind of fade sound um, and feedback through the amp. But um, then he uh, starts playing and then he just starts playing more and more and then he just goes into a full-blown solo which uh, lasts um, for over a minute I think and um, it's full of holes, it's full of bends and slides it's not really that shreddy at all, it's just um, Soaring, that is what he's doing, just only soars, and that's it. So it's a very big sounding solo because it just creeps up, it um, fades in, then it erupts into complete holds and grand um, musical um, playing and massive heart and feel to it, and then it fades out. So he doesn't finish playing, it's, uh, they just kind of turn the volume down on everything um, and that's how the song ends, it just kind of turns the volume off and cuts them off at a point which is annoying because I would like to hear the rest of the solo because it is so damn amazing um, it is such an incredible solo, such a good solo it has so much heart and feel to it um, Before the Veil is um, 4 minutes 12 seconds and this is the music and lyrics are by Nicholas Sohn as well as Frederick um, for both. Um, now before the veil, um, there's they do something which um, may have been done um, before, but for me personally, I don't think I've ever seen this done before. And that is um, you have the typical metal intro, the typical metal um, riff and everything, but the chorus. And um, I feel really stupid uh, because of this. Um, but the chorus is acoustic. Now I didn't pick up on this, I thought it was still electric, I thought it was still exactly the same, but no, the chorus is acoustic. But it fits really well, because you go from just uh, the, the guitars and everything, and um, the you know, metal singing style, and then the chorus comes in and it's just all acoustic. There is no um, electric, it's all um, full-blown acoustic. And that's it. And um, it works. It actually does work. And um, I've never heard it done before. So if this actually hasn't been done before, then this is quite amazing um, to see um, this be, be done. And if it has been done before, obviously it's not as special. But um, it adds a fair bit because obviously you get an entire chorus of acoustic uh, playing. And then the riff of metal, which adds some very different levels of um, styles, in, in fairness. Um, solo, again, incredible solo. The guitarist is unbelievable. We're All the Enemy is um, the heaviest song um, by far, and that's um, 4 minutes 2 seconds. It's um, a lot of screaming. Uh, I think pretty much the entire riffs um, for both times is full blown out um, screaming and um, then the chorus, uh, the actual singing comes in but um, yeah um, 
the chorus sounds good, so even though I'm not really into the screaming and the bloody riff and everything, it's really annoying. Because he's such a good singer, I don't know why he does this. It adds diversity, I'm guessing that is the whole point, and if you're into it, it's going to just give you so much variety. But then the chorus sounds amazing. Um, the solo, again, is um, really good. The first solo is uh, Nicholas, so this is again two solos, and the second solo is Frederick. Um, and both solos are absolutely incredible. Nicholas is a fantastic air guitar player, extremely good, better than a lot of actual lead guitarists. And then Frederick, as um, I've been saying, um, absolutely blows it away in all of his solos. They all sound phenomenal. Um, the change um, here is um, harder to kind of notice than the other two solos. Um, they kind of uh, bleed together. At least um, last time I heard it kind of did. Um, so there's that. And then Ascent of the Heaven, if you don't have the bonus tracks, this is um, the end. Um, this is gonna, this is the longest air track, um, which is 7 minutes 34. It starts acoustic. And um, yeah, it starts acoustic just like um, The Sacrifice. And um, eventually it uh, does build. And then it gets to uh, the typical sound that they've been uh, doing before. And then it goes to another part where it's really scream um, heavy. Then it goes back to the typical sound. And then you get um, a solo, which is... Um, it kind of sounds like a Sinister Gate style um, a thing. Um, it starts um, quite um, funky, like Sinister kind of likes to do. A really kind of funky, uh, cool sound. And then it goes into um, a typical kind of uh, metal shred type of uh, play. And then it goes back to the uh, chorus. And um, but going into uh, the uh, bonus tracks, um, so the next track is All I Ever Wanted, which is 3 minutes 47. Um, you get two solos in this again. Um, All I Ever Wanted is um, more kind of rock based. It's um, laid back compared to uh, what they've really kind of been doing. Um, the solos, um, again, for this one, uh, kind of bleed uh, together, um, mix in the fast and uh, the melodic, um, but um, yeah, it's quite a laid back, um, easy song. Revelations, um, the next song, um, which is by uh, Frederick and Thomas um, Barfollin. And then the uh, lyrics are Frederick and Nicholas. Um, this one is kind of um, along the same lines. It's um, kind of um, rock based, and um, the chorus is quite similar to the previous track, All I Ever Wanted. So, um, yeah, um, because of that, um, it's not really as good. In fairness, because it kind of uh, repeats the same kind of way as all I ever wanted. Uh, the riff does a new vocal style because um, it's got that kind of um, effect which uh, the voice kind of sounds faded in the back um, while all the instruments are there with uh, the natural, normal tone to them. But the vocal uh, sounds like there's an effect which um, kind of puts them in the background. In the chorus, um, again, it's a, it's singing normal, and he goes back to kind of sounding like all I ever wanted, just a simple kind of rock sound. Um, the solo um, is um, probably the weakest. Well, actually, it is the weakest. Um, because um, it's sung over, the whole thing. So um, the book um, says solo, so um, that's why I know it's there. If it didn't say that that is not focusing but yeah it says solo but um you know if it didn't say that i wouldn't have really picked up on it because then i went to try and find it and then i realized there is some kind of fancy playing under the singer that must be it because there's nothing else so um yeah it's a shame because i kind of want to hear it in its full glory instead of have the singer just completely sing over the entire part there's no real break at all and um, where the guitar kind of comes through for a bit the whole thing is sung over and it's not qu quite as subtle it's pure proper singing over it and then it, he's not got a very lead um 
you know, pedal, because um, guitarists, they have the pedal where they um, push it uh, when they do the solo and it gives them the extra sound um, to come over all, over all the other instruments. It doesn't sound like he even does that, he's just the same as every um, the riff sounds. So the lead singer is way up in front and then the back and then the rest of the musicians are in the back. And um, yeah, his solo is just um, on that level. So um, it's a bit kind of muddy and faded. And um, yeah, that is it. basically it. So um, overall, um, the vocals are absolutely amazing. Uh, this singer has an incredible voice. Um, he has a fair decent um, amount of range. He can do high notes as well. Um, throughout the album, um, he does some highs. It's not the highest I've ever heard at all or anything, but he can do them. He can scream if you're into that. Um, he can um, push his voice um, hard, um, he can do uh, melodic, um, he can do some deep um, vocal lines, um, he's quite varied. Um, in chorus, if he actually has um, a wide octave range, because he is pretty damn good, and if he does have a wide octave range, then he is going to be a very incredible singer. Um, he's an incredible lead guitarist as well, which is why I'm curious of why um, they kind of uh, take him out um, so many of the songs because he only has three and then if you include the bonus tracks there's only four and there's um, 14 tracks and he's only on four of them which is um, disappointing because he is amazingly good but the actual lead guitarist um, he is absolutely incredible um, he plays with heart in like everything um, this um, the odds uh, solo um, where it's um, mostly shred based but um, he definitely thinks about it and um, cares for um, his playing and uh, what he's doing with the shred to make it sound uh, nice and not just um, mindlessly uh, whittling um, and um, his tone is absolutely uh, great um, he has effects like the keyboard effect um, on um, Oh, what was it? Onto the Damned, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was that. And um, the acoustic uh, start uh, to Onto the Damned as well um, was uh, nice, and then all the heavy chugging. A Blaze, which was a great solo because it sounded like the song was coming to an end, and then the guitar was slowly just doing the kind of fade sound, and then it just slowly just built up, and then it just burst into just such amazing, beautiful holds and slides and all sorts. It was such a beautiful sound and then um, before the veils um, again the um, chorus being um, acoustic um, which I only recently figured out um, every single time I've heard it um, I just thought it was electric which um, you're all gonna think I'm stupid now because it is so obvious but um, it wasn't to me I completely missed it um, a lot of times and um, yeah, so the guitars are great. Um, sometimes uh, the bass has a bit of a lead. Not a lead as in a lead solo, but um, everything fades and then you just hear bass, I mean. Um, so there's that, and then you've got some screams. You've got a wide range of uh, vocal variety from Nicholas. Frederick um, is an unbelievable guitarist. He is so damn good. And um, there is um, a fair bit of variety. you got the very heavy, you got um, the old school, you got the groovy, and you got the amazingly big orchestral um sounds and everything then uh, the two last tracks which are kind of more rock um, based um, sound and uh, then you got the melodic and then Ascent of the Heaven which is um, the most progressive one because as I say it uh, starts off melodic and then it goes to uh, the typical metal then it goes to screamo then it goes back to the typical metal and it's a bit all over the place um, so there is a lot on offer um, Blaze has a superb uh, chorus um, before the veil, uh, the chorus is uh, just un unbelievable um, to me just because it's so different to the rest of the song and it actually fits, like it still kind of blows my mind. Um, it's really good, very good. The only problems would be um, obviously um, We Are The Enemy, there is a fair bit of screaming and I would prefer it not to be that screaming. Um, the Sacrificed is a bit too boring, um, it really needed a solo, it desperately needed a solo, 
Savage, the solo could have been a bit longer and a bit better. Um, Revelations, the singer shouldn't have sung over the solo. Um, I want to hear the solo. I don't want it drowned out at all. And um, yeah, other than that, everything's kind of nailed. Um, so uh, putting a score on this, I would give it an 8.5. Um, it uh, doesn't um, reach a 9 because, as I said, the sacrifice wasn't really that good. We are the enemy. There is a fair bit of screaming in it, which ain't really me. Um, revelations, um, solo was sung over and things. And um, I know Nicholas can do way more solos uh, throughout. Um, they can do way more variety as well. So they are open to do a lot more, so I can't really go out and just give it a full blown 9 or a 10 when I know that there is more from this band. And if they just do more and I say this is a 10 and then they come out with something which is so much more diverse and intense, and then go 10, it's just like well it's on the same level, but um, Nemesis is obviously not as good as that and diverse. So I have to go with the 8.5, which is still a very, very high score. Because it's a, it's definitely above average, it's definitely better than good, it's great, which is the 8, but it's better than great, which is why it's the 8.5. It's just not on um, 10 masterpiece and um, 9, you know, full blown absolutely amazing, but it's close to that. It's a very great album and um, in ways um, amazing. So, um, 8.5. So, um, that'll be it for me because it's now getting dark outside, so I'm losing light. <laughs> so, um, thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed. If you uh, liked, leave a like. If you want to see more from me, please subscribe. If you didn't like the video, then you can dislike um, all you want. Um, but I would um, appreciate if you leave a comment so then um, I can actually see uh, what it was so um, I can improve on it. Because um, I don't know if there's anything um, I can uh, do better. If my rambling's a bit too much or something, I don't know. Unless someone tells me. So um, that'll be it from me. And I'll see you next time. Bye.